Hi, I'm John Willoughby, back with part two of our cryptocurrency dashboard app development tutorial. In the first segment, we outlined the requirements for our project and defined the features that we'll be building. That included the ability to select a base currency, list prices and volumes for a large number of alt currencies, and then select a base alt currency pair and display the price history. So let's get started. We're going to use the Kendo UI Dojo here to enter our code and see what happens. The first thing we need to do is take care of some housekeeping. We need to set up our app and put in things like the titles, of course. Now we need to load up the Kendo UI CSS files and the actual JavaScript library. While you'll probably download the library to your server, we'll use a CDN here to make the app more portable. And of course, since we're using Kendo UI for jQuery, we also need to load the jQuery library. Doesn't do much at this point. Let's add in a label just to have something to see. And we hit Control Enter to run the code. And there. There's our text. So far, so good. Now that we've set up the basic framework for our app, let's start to add in some components. The first task is to create two sections for the app, one for the trading pair list and one for the history chart. We'll be doing this by implementing the splitter component. And to create the splitter, we first need to define a container element with two child elements representing the left and right pane. Now let's add in the JavaScript that actually adds in the splitter. In the splitter's options, we'll make the left pane 40% wide and both panes collapsible. That way, either pane can be hidden or shown, providing more space to view the grid or the chart. Let's add some labels to each side for now, just to get a better view of our panes. And let's run that. And there we see that we have the two panes, the data pane and the grid pane, and we've got the splitter and the line in between. And we can move that, we can grab it and move it around left to right to change the sizing of the two panes, or we can actually collapse one of the panes completely and restore it if we need to. All right, now we've got our two main blocks for our app implemented. Users need to be able to select one of the three base currencies to display prices in. Instead of just using buttons, we're going to use a tab strip component here to let the user select between a base currency of Bitcoin, Tether, or Litecoin. First of all, we're going to remove our placeholder text from the left-hand pane and add a div for the tab strip. Then we're going to add the JavaScript to implement the actual Kendo UI tab strip component. The first tab, BTC, will be the default value. For now, we'll just display some placeholder text where the price list grid is going to be. And we run it, and there we have our three tabs. Looks like everything's working. Next, let's take a look at the controls we need on the right-hand side pane where the price history chart is going to go. Users need to be able to select a date and time for the period to show and a duration. This will be implemented with the date time picker component for the starting date and time and a button group for the duration. First off, we'll put in the date and time picker. The date and time picker will be used to set a specific time in the past where the chart will begin. The chart will show the market history beginning at that date and time and ending at the current time. Inside the element for the right-hand pane of the splitter, we'll replace our text with an input for the date time picker. And then we add the JavaScript to add the actual component. The picker should allow users to enter a date and time in the input as well as from the picker. The Cryptopia API we'll be using to get the market history accepts hours for time, so the picker needs to be configured to show time in 60-minute intervals. Now let's see how that works. We'll click Run and... Yep, looks like a date and time picker. Next up is the button group to be used to set the duration to display. First of all, we add a div for it. And then we add the JavaScript. The button group will provide options to show the market history for a 6, 12, 24, or 48-hour period. The 6-hour option will be the default view. And let's run that. Yep, seems to work. This combination gives the user the best of both worlds, the flexibility of a date time picker to select any point in the past, and the buttons to allow the user to quickly zoom in and zoom out of that selected time. In the rest of the series, we'll build the grid, chart, and add a custom theme to the dashboard. But before we build the next feature, we'll take a look into how to use the data source component. A data source is needed to retrieve the data from our API and inject it into our grid and chart, and we'll see exactly how to do that in the next segment.